Hey guys, I've been prototyping a couple of small 3D games and I'm making my movement solution available to you both on the website and also on GitLab for free. So it's open source, you can do whatever you want with it. It's a movement state machine, I've been working on that for a couple of years now, actually, on and off. And um, it's my go-to every time I want to create a 3D game, no matter what it is. So if it's going to be something complex, something easy, I always go there. So this movement state machine actually takes care of a couple of issues you run into for the first time um, when you first create your 3D controllers. Those issues could be things such as going up and down slopes, um, falling off, getting stuck in the walls, maintaining air velocity, a couple of little things like that that um, I've been playing around and finding solution to and making it buildable on. So if there's something else I have in spot, please let me know in the comment section below as this project is something, you know, I've been working on it for a couple of years on and off, so I'm actively developing it over the last four years, you could say. Um, and, and I'm currently in a big 3D game rush, so yeah, um, let me know, I can always make this better. Also, the only states right now that are available for this state machine are walking, um, jumping, double jumping, and also falling. Of course, I'm planning on adding a little bit more as I go forward, so I want to add a, a bird one, I want to add a awesome bird controller, like a bird controller, so that's something I'm working on right now, I'm going to be putting that directly there in the source code, so it's going to be free on GitHub, it's also free on the website, it's going to be updated at both places, and the rest of the video will actually show you how to get the project. Um, there's two, two ways to get it, as I said, GitLab, not GitHub, and also the website. If you download it on the website, you're going to be um, downloading a Unity package, which is a little bit different for the Unity package, you will um, you will have to do something else. You will have to do extra step if you want to configure that in your game. But it's something you can add on top of a game you already have. Now the GitLab project is just a project itself. It comes with the project settings, with the input, with everything. So if you're starting out fresh, that would be the best option. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so the first option I'll be showing is the GitLab option. If you go on GitLab, you have the whole project. It comes in with all the input settings. It comes in with um, all the Cinema Machine stuff and all the packages. And you'll find out that you have two scenes, one called Input Manager Test, where you can test out the inputs, if they work or not. Um, you have two axes. So for me, W, A, S, D, and also the arrow keys. Those are my two axes, just like if you were playing on a... Um, any type of controller. So I usually use the Xbox One controller. I unfortunately don't have that with me here in India. Um, and you also have a couple of different inputs for other button, action buttons, basically. Um, they're mapped to the same thing as what you have in Overwatch. So Shift, E, and I forgot the rest. <laughs> but um, if you want to know what these are, you can always head over to Project Settings and go under Input, Axis, and here you'll find all of them. So starting here, those are all specific to this. So primary fire, secondary fire, that's left mouse, right mouse, ability one is left shift, E, and Q. Okay, simple enough. So I've mapped those to the Overwatch control at first, and then you have the motor test, in which um, this is where you come, this is where you play around with what you want. Right now there's already a controller in the scene. Let's see which one is it exactly. I'm going to pull down my arrow key. And it's the first person controller and the camera inside of it is a first person camera as well. So if you play this, you'll be able to move around in um, 3D space with all the normal states and that's the first person camera as well attached to it. Now if you want to try another one, you can always head over to the scripts, pre-made, and you'll find different controllers. So there's also a third person controller. So if I go say back in my project, which is my arrow key actually, which keeps closing, that's annoying. Um, if I delete this, so if I delete first person, I go back in my project and I draw up the third person, we end up with something like this right away. So just the prefab itself and everything should be working just fine. Yeah, now it's a little bit hard to control <laughs> uh, in this environment. This environment is really not made for third person, it's way too small. But hey, it's working out the get-go. Now, um, you're going to see that for this one, there's a couple of error that shows up. They're actually not error, they're warning, saying that um, the animator state machine, the the mechanism state machine behind that, do not receive the proper parameters. So it says something like parameter speed doesn't exist because the state machine sends in those, 
but we have nothing to read them from at the moment. So it's, it's a feature I'm currently working on. I'm going to try and get a dummy in there so we can hook in some normal animation for the third person um, controller, of course. Then as soon as this is done, you'll have a state machine. You can plug in your own controller and do whatever you feel like. Okay, so that's the easy way. All right, for this second part, we will download it directly on the website and add it to an existing project. So it is over here. It's called Movement Controller. You can, of course, if you don't see it right away, it's been a while, you'll be able to find it right here. And then hit download. So it's the movement controller, and then it's going to pop up. Okay, you want to be saving this somewhere. I'll save this under my um, download folder. And then over here, you will be getting the package. Now, your project has to be open already. This is my existing project, even though it's empty, it's still act as a existing <laughs> um, project. So let me go ahead, double click on this, and you'll see it open up in Unity quite soon. Now I want to be imported in pretty much everything, nothing in there is um, too much, maybe except the artwork right now, if you have your own gem you can tick that off, and then of course import. Um, right off the get-go you're going to need a couple of things, so it's not going to work out of the box. There is some packages that we depend on, and there's also inputs that have to be set manually. So if I am to open up, let's say, the motor test, now this whole gym was made using Pro Builder. If you want to have this gym, of course, you can um, add Pro Builder to your project. I recommend that you don't, however, if you don't plan on using it after that, you can just go off and create your own game um, without having Sigi Arena in there. So you could go ahead and just create yourself a plane and say, this would be it, right? This would be your game. Um, now, if you do want to have it, however, you know how to install packages. So for the packages, whether it's Pro Builder or something else that we'll require, we go under Window, Package Manager. Now I'll go ahead and uh, quickly install Pro Builder. As I've mentioned, you don't really have to do that. Um, and I can't find it right now, so I have to make sure that I show all the packages. Let's see. I want to show the preview packages. And here is Pro Builder. And with Pro Builder installed, we are now going to get this result. So that's pretty cool. Now the other dependency we had is Cinemachine. I'm using Cinemachine for my camera because it's so it's so efficient. Actually, it's so easy to use, um, and you can make changes to it very very fast. So go ahead and install that. And now with Cinemachine installed, there is one thing left to do, and those are the inputs. I'm still not migrated to the new input system, therefore I'm using my own inputs and I invite you to either get rid of those or of course uh, configure them, which is going to take a second. So you're going to see down here that we have all these axes. You can also open up the input manager, you'll be able to see it. So input manager, oh sorry, here in the project. And um, you can have a good look at exactly what kind of input we will require because there's a couple of uh, different axes that you'll need to input. So here they are, left horizontal joystick, left vertical joystick, right, right, left, left, right, right, ability one, two, three, primary fire, secondary fire, and finally jump. Um, those are all things that you'll have to set manually in the over here, edit, project settings, and input. So you create one with the exact same name, you go ahead and extend that to say I think it was 26, I'm not sure. And you'll have more here you can edit. Just change the name for whatever you see on here and input the proper thing, whatever you want this to be. Now do know that I'm actually merging this over to the, to the um, new input system. So maybe by then, by the time you watch this video, it might have already been imported to the new input system and it's going to be much easier for you to configure. So I'll actually let everybody know when I do that. And right now, because I'm too lazy to do all the inputs, what I will go ahead and do is head over to GitLab and on my GitLab, I'll find the same project. So I know you guys don't want to download it directly from GitLab, but you can head over here and um, head over to the project settings. And I'm actually just going to grab my input manager. So it should be down here. Here, so input manager asset. So I'll go ahead and I'll grab this one. There should be a download button somewhere. Or if there is not, here's what I'll do. I'll just go ahead and grab, oh, there it is, <laughs> downloads. So I'll download that. And what I will be doing is open this project up, 
show in Explorer. And I'll go one step, actually, I'm in the right spot over here. So project settings, and I'll just replace it with the one I've currently downloaded. So this is the one I had, download it, and I'll paste it in here. Um, let's see, so we also need to change the name of it. So project settings, input manager, nope, I'll just change that to input manager. Make sure I overwrite it. So delete the old one. And there we go. And then I'll close the project and reopen again. And here we go. So we reopen the project. If I head over to my project settings, we will now see all the new inputs. So here they are. And I technically should be able to play my game right now without any issue. So, okay, so I'm currently on the... Oh yeah, there is one issue, of course. So I forgot about this part, but since we imported Cinemachine after, we need to configure Cinemachine. So if we head over to Motor Test, which is the scene we're in right now, um, we're going to go under our third person or first person or whatever you want to be using at this point, And we are going to assign a couple of different things. So I'll move my inspector on the right and I'll make sure I configure Cinemachine properly. And by that I mean just click on your camera and assign a follow target and also a look at target. In this case the follow is the motor and also the look at is also the motor. And now all that is left to do is configure our third person camera properly. Now of course this is not this is not configured properly so we need bigger distance. We need to play with the um, the circles, which are these things, and I invite you to do so directly on the camera itself. Um, that's it. If you want to have the exact same settings as I as I had before, as I said, you could just go ahead and download the other project from GitLab. It's going to be much easier. So guys, uh, this is actually where I'll be ending today's video. And again, would like to thank everybody who is pledging on Patreon. We've got another video tomorrow. Hopefully, it's going to be out by tomorrow if my computer doesn't give out on me. And I'll let you know what the hell I'm doing in India. So, um, yeah, thank you so much once again. And I will catch you tomorrow. That's it. See you then.